But man, you know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, as we change the order of the service this morning, I want you to turn to the book of Ezra. To the book of Ezra. Amen. It's right after Second Chronicles. Right between Second Chronicles and Nehemiah. We want to go back, amen, a couple of thousand years ago and want to retell or recount, amen, a piece of history. Amen. I want to give you some encouragement this morning. How many of you say, Brother Chris, I'd like to be encouraged? Amen. I want to give us some encouragement this morning. Amen. To continue on and to carry on. Amen. A lot of things we face in this life that we just can't simply understand. and We can't define it. We can't justify it. We can't see the reason for it. But it's against us. Amen. It's an opposition. It's a, amen, a spirit of oppression, amen, that's come. And it's trying to, amen, to put down what God has begun to start. And I want to encourage you this morning because I read in God's Word, amen, how God encouraged His people at a time whenever they were discouraged. Amen. I read from God's Word how He encouraged them, amen, to lift them up and to, amen, to put the spirit of boldness and courage in them. Amen, and to help them to continue, amen, to press against what seems to be an immovable object sometimes. And if you have your Bibles, if you're there at Ezra, chapter number 4, say amen. Amen. In verse 23, it reads this way. Now, when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rahum and Shemshiah the scribe and their companions... They went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them to cease by force and by power. 24 says, Then ceased the work of the house of God which is at Jerusalem. So it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius king of Persia. Chapter 5 verse 1 says, Then, somebody say then. Then the prophets, Haggai the prophet, and Zechariah the son of Edo, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. Verse 2, say then. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. Did you get that? For the backdrop to this story, we find, amen, that the tabernacle, amen, or the temple has been destroyed. The time frame in which we minister from this morning is the northern kingdom has already been moved in and taken over by the Assyrians. The southern kingdom had been holding on, amen. God had raised up good men, good kings, amen, but in the last days it began to fall away. And we find out in the midst of the falling away, God would send a man by the name of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah would begin to prophesy before the captivity, through the captivity, to the end of the captivity. God would raise up a man, Ezekiel. God would raise up a man, Daniel. God would raise up these prophets, amen, that would speak to the children of Israel. But all of this has transpired, and now we've come to the place, amen, where Cyrus, the king of Persia, amen, God had moved in his heart through, I believe, amen, the testimony of these men of God, amen, Daniel. He was part, amen, of Daniel. He saw, amen, and heard Jeremiah. He heard these prophets speak of God, and he knew, amen, the things that God could do, and he declared in the last chapter of Second Chronicles that he said, I want you to go back if there is a man among you of God's people. He says, I want you to rise up, and I'm going to send everything that you need with you uh, to go back to Jerusalem and build the house of God again. Now, that wasn't a Jew that stood up and said that. That was the king of Persia, Cyrus. But God had stirred his heart to build a house again for God's people. And as they began to transgress, or they began to move, they moved forward, they progressed. And they, the Bible says that Zerubbabel and Jeshua, and they were several more, amen, that the Spirit of God rose up in the men, the princes, and the, the head fathers of the house of Israel, and they went, amen, to begin to go back and to lay the foundation for the house of God. 
And in the midst of building the house of God, they have the letters from the king of Persia. Now, if you remember, that started out as the king of Babylon. And then in the last days of the Babylonian Empire, the Medes and the Persians broke through, amen, and conquered Babylon, amen, which entailed conquered, amen, uh, uh, those few remaining, amen, uh, uh, Jews that were of the house of Judah and Benjamin. The northern tribes already been taken in by the Assyrians. They've already been conquered. That last little stronghold, amen, of God's people holding on was the house of Judah and Benjamin. And they had Jerusalem and the southern part of the kingdom of God. But they, they've been uh, taken over by the Babylonians in captivity because of their, amen, unbelief and because of their stiff-hearted and hard-headedness, amen. And they would continue to push away God and they would continue, amen, to commit spiritual adultery by going after things uh, that had nothing to do with the house of God. And God brought, amen, that captivity upon them. And in doing so, amen, we find that these, uh, uh, that the children of God are in captivity. Now, he raised up Cyrus, the king of Persia, and he said, I want y'all, if there's a man among you, to go back and build a house. And Zerubbabel and Jeshua, the high priest, they began to, or the priests began to lead others, and they went back and they began to do that which was necessary. And the Bible says that there was, he gave a list of all the names in Ezra chapter 1 and 2 of all the princes and the heads of the houses of Israel, amen, and all those that went with them and the number, and the number that went back was several thousand that went back. And they, the Bible says the first thing they'd done, I believe it's in chapter 3, amen, is that they raised up an altar. Amen. And they began to pray and seek God. Amen. And it says then, it says then they began to lay the foundation. Amen. Uh, uh, while you're right there close to it. Amen. Let's just read it real quick while we know where we're at. Amen. Hallelujah. You love the Lord today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what happens when you read from one Bible to the next. It don't look the same. <laughs> This one's got large print. The one I was looking at yesterday got small print. That might have been why I got such a bad headache. Amen. My study Bible is a little bit different. Amen. But we see in chapter 3, amen, where they gave the money. Amen. In verse 10, And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets. The Levites, the sons of Asaph, with symbols to the praise of the Lord after the ordinance of David the king. And they sang together by in chorus, praising and giving thanks unto the Lord. Amen. In other words, they had set up the altar. Amen. They had uh, offered before him at the altar. Amen. God strengthened them and gave them the courage. Amen. To begin to lay the foundation. And it said there in verse 10 of chapter 3 that when the builders laid the foundation. Uh, amen. They brought together the priest. Amen. And the singers. And they began to sing praises unto God. Amen. We talked a little bit about rejoicing, amen, in the house of God, amen, how we come in, amen, and it's not sit down and bless me if you can, but it's come in, amen, and begin to put something into it, amen, I, I, I want to, uh, I heard a young man testify a couple weeks ago at a revival, amen, and he said, God, if you want me to be a wood toter, he said, I want to be a wood toter for the kingdom of God, amen, some of us, amen, our purpose in the kingdom of God, amen, is to bring wood into the house, amen, so that the house will have a fire, amen, and it'll have a permanent supply, amen, of that which is necessary to keep the fire going. What is that? Amen. That's a praise God. Amen. That's a hallelujah. Amen. That's a blessing God. Amen. That's a touch her Jesus. Amen. It's something. Amen. To add to. Amen. And cause the fire to fuel and begin to burn. Amen. So maybe you're supposed to be a wood toter. Amen. If you're supposed to be a wood toter. Amen. Would you please. Amen. Bring your wood. Amen. We need it. Amen. We need, amen, for every part, amen, in the house of God, amen, to be working together. Why? Because we're all fighting an enemy, amen. And if there's a breach in the wall, amen, he's going to find that breach. And that's kind of why we're here this morning, because we want to encourage. Why? Because there are things in our life, amen, there's places, amen, where the enemy's gotten in and gotten his control, and got his hand in it, amen, in such a way. And we're praying and we're seeking God and, and we're rebuking it, amen, and we're coming against it in the name of Jesus. But it seems to have taken a stronghold or a foothold, uh, amen, and we're fighting, doing everything we can. Uh, and this church, amen, is part of, uh, amen, that getting that enemy back out, amen. When we bring our wood, amen, we bring our sacrifice, we bring ourselves to the house of God, amen. It may be rough at home, it may be rough at work, amen, but when we bring our wood and put it on the fire here, amen. God will lift us up amen. and strengthen us. 
we see where the children of God began to build the house. In the midst of that building, I want to read something to you. We're talking about encouraging the house of God this morning. In verse 12 of chapter 3, he said, But many of the priests and Levites and the chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes they wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud for joy so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of weeping for the people shouted with a loud shout and the noise was heard afar off and I began to see something here, Sister Nancy, as this foundation began to be laid. Amen. It was some, amen, who had seen the first, amen. They was a part, amen, of the original, amen, temple of God, amen. And they had seen that thing as it was erected, amen. And now, amen, 70 some odd years has passed or more than that, amen. And they've not seen the glory of the Lord, amen. They've been in a foreign land. Uh, they've been in hell on earth, so to speak, amen. They've been separated from their God, uh, even though they could pray and seek His face and He would come. Uh, but still, amen, that temple represented something to to them, it tied them to God. And whenever they begin to see the foundation laid, the Bible says that some of the old men that had seen the glory of the first begin to weep. Amen. I, and it said some begin to shout for joy. I can understand this in the same house. You can have some, amen, uh, weeping, amen, but yet weeping in the Lord, amen, because God has restored something unto me, amen, something I thought was lost, uh, something I thought was gone, uh, something that, amen, I had forgotten about. Uh, it could never come back to me, uh, but all of a sudden I begin to see uh, the evidence uh, as He begins to prepare the ground. Uh, God's bringing it back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they begin to weep. It wasn't a weep of sorrow, but it was a weep I thought I would never see God again. But here, He's beginning to lay the foundation. Oh, hallelujah, church. There's some meat in that if you grab a hold to it, amen. Something, amen, I thought was destroyed. Something I thought was gone, amen, that I long to see again, amen. The enemy told me he had done away with it. The enemy told me I'd never see it again. The enemy jumped on my back, uh, and he's rode me like a mule, amen, saying you'll never come back. Uh, but I'm beginning to see God lay the foundation. Hallelujah. I'm beginning to see God do something, enemy. Hallelujah. Some wept. Amen. Some wept. And it said you couldn't discern the weeping over the shouting. Amen. In other words, there was such a deep, amen, desire or such a deep, amen, there was so much hurt. There was so much, amen, whenever they had been removed out of their land. And I want you to see something. Whenever they were taken from their land, they had been taught, amen, as children, that God gave us this land for a possession. Our father Abraham, amen, obeyed God. His son Isaac obeyed God. His son Jacob, amen, obeyed God. We can trace back our lineage, amen, all the way to Abraham. This is our land. It belongs to us. This is our home. And now they're being forced out, taken by, amen, forced and removed from the place. It tore their heart out. Amen, to be removed from this place. And some of us this morning, we feel like we have been torn. Amen, abused, amen. And the enemy has stolen, amen, everything from us, amen. There's nothing left. There's nothing left to fight for. I'm in a foreign land uh, spiritually. I'm beaten. Uh, I'm weak and I'm destroyed. Uh, and I feel like I have no use. Uh, I feel like I have nothing to offer to God. Uh, but can I tell you something? Uh, amen, when the prophets begin to stand up uh, and they begin to preach, thus saith the Lord, uh, amen, all of a sudden something begins to rise up uh, in the heart uh, well, I know that voice. That's the voice of God. He ain't forgot about me. He's here. Hallelujah. He ain't forgot about me. Hallelujah. He ain't forgot about me. Amen. And they saw the foundation being laid. 
for the house of their God. Oh, can you understand? Amen. The young ones who had heard the stories about the first temple. The young ones, amen, who had heard about the glory of God and how it had moved and how it had led and guided. Amen. But they've been raised up in Babylonian captivity. Amen. They've not seen the fullness, the manifestation of the moving of God. They've not been privy, amen, to walking into the temple. Amen. And seeing the tapestry and seeing the beauty and seeing the instruments of the house of God uh, and watching the priest, amen, uh, as they carry out the will of God uh, each and every day. Uh, they've not been privy to this. Uh, they've heard about it, but they've never seen it. But now they begin to, amen, cry for joy because they begin to see the foundation laid. Two people, both in love with the same God, but two totally different emotions. <laughs> Amen. You ain't always going to shout like me. I may not always weep like you. Amen. In other words, God, one God in heaven. Amen. Touching an individual heart. Amen. Each one of us individually in a different way. But nevertheless, it's the same God, the same Spirit. Amen. Why? Because we all have different needs. We're at different places in our walk with Him. Some of us need encouragement. Some need boldness. Some need courage. Some need instruction. Some need, amen, a swift kick. But whatever it is, amen, that same God, amen, can minister to your need. And that's what He does. Hallelujah. That's what He does. So we see... They've been now, they've laid the foundation in that chapter 3. There was a noise of weeping and there was a noise of joy. And it was hard to tell the difference between two, but now you know why some was crying uncontrollably. What was lost is now found. The Bible says in Luke, I believe the 15th chapter, 16th chapter, amen, that the prodigal son, when the father saw him coming, you know, he said, what once was lost is now found. Amen. And he ran to him. And he fell on him. He didn't wait for the son, amen, to come to him. Uh, but he went to the son. Why? Because that was, amen, something that meant more to him uh, than anything else. Uh, he left the 99 to go out and search for the one. Uh, why? Because each soul to him, uh, amen, is worth, amen, going after. And I'm so thankful for that. So they laid the foundation. They built the altar. They laid the foundation. The emotion that Amen. Sprang up in the hearts of the people. You may think this is somewhat funny, but to me it meant so much to me. We started having church this month, this five years. We've been having church five years this month. Amen. The first little place we had church was the Women's Center. Amen. Not many of you here today was there that first Sunday. That's all right. Amen. You didn't know we was having church, or you'd have probably been there. We was there about three or four weeks, and we moved into the Harvey's Cleaners building across from Harvey's. And I won't never forget the day that I went over to Beulah Church, and they had two little old wooden altars in there. Breaks my heart today to think about it. But I was told, get those altars and carry them to your church. And I got those altars, and I carried them. And Sister Donna, when I took them inside and I set them up, I began to weep in the house of God. Because I knew that was the place where it all started at. Amen. The meeting place with God is what we've got to have. Amen. And God performed, amen, and gave us, amen, those little altars, amen. And there was a few that came in that course, amen, that fell on those altars and prayed through, amen, to old time salvation. And I'm so thankful for that. But I know the feeling whenever the house of God begins to take shape. Amen. And things begin to come together. Amen. And some begin to weep for what they thought was forever lost. They're beginning to see it rise up. And some that had never seen the former glory, only heard the stories, only heard the tales. Amen. They begin to see it rise up. And they begin to, amen, shout. Oh, our God is a mighty God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. On heaven and earth. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's a powerful God. But then something happened. Oh, wouldn't it be good if we could live, live 
all the time into my God is an awesome God. He reigns. And we just stand on that precipice, on that mountaintop. And it's just that, that mountaintop experience where they can't nothing bring us down. And we're right there touching the hand of God. But something happened. The Bible says in chapter 4, Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, oh, when the enemy caught wind, amen, that, the, that the, the altars was rebuilt and the foundation was laid of the house of God, oh, then did not the enemy come. He came to Zerubbabel, to the chief of the fathers, and said to him, Let us build with you. Hmm, that's strange. He didn't say stop. He said, Let us build with you. For we seek your God, as you do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esar Hadon, king of Assyria, or Assyria, which brought us up hither. They said, we've heard that you began to build the house of God again. Now, who are these children that came saying, we have heard that you began to build? Remember, I told you that there was a northern tribe that had been taken over by the king of Assyria. And that king of Assyria had removed all of the temple. Uh, uh, if we go way, way back in history, for those of us that's been with me for a while, you know what I'm fitting to say. There were two kings that came out of Solomon after his death. One was his son Rehoboam, who took the southern tribes, and Jeroboam took the northern tribes. Ten went north, and two stayed there to the south. We, we, we've read that, and we've talked about that, and we've preached about that because there was such a pivotal moment in the plan of God there. So those ten in the north began to fall into idolatry, and they began to allow the king of Assyria and the, the, uh, uh, the gods of the Assyrian people, amen, take hold in their life. And they turn from God, amen, to these false gods. Amen. And now the southern tribe has fallen into captivity. But God has raised up a standard. And I thought about that word standard. Do, do we really understand what standard is? In the Old Testament, it said that each tribe had a standard. Now, I think of standard as, all right, this is not good. This is the best it can be, and this is the standard. The standard is the center. All right, we're either below what we should be, or maybe you're above what you have to be. You've gone further than what, but the standard is, is the, uh, uh, the average. That's what we think about when we think of standard. In other words... You know, you either got to come up to the standard or, you know, there's some that go above and beyond their call of duty, don't they? I mean, they just, this is all you got to do. This is the standard. That wasn't what standard meant. Standard was the banner. Amen. It was the representation of each house. Amen. There were 12 houses, 12 princes, 12 sons, amen, that made up the children of God. And here he's talking about, they said, you know, we... We're servant, or we seek the same God that you do. Amen. When those ten tribes to the north, amen, fell into idolatry, the two tribes to the south, they fell in, amen, to idolatry, amen. The standard of God, amen, had disappeared somewhat. Amen. It had went away. Why? Because the houses of God, amen, or the sons, or, or those 12 sons, the houses, those families, uh, amen, had let the standard, amen, drop, amen. It wasn't the status quo, uh, but it was, amen, that we're blood bought, amen. We're the children of the Most High God, amen, through the Abrahamic covenant, amen. It represented who they were, amen. Uh, and when you put that standard back up there over this house, uh, it declaims who we are. Who are you? The standard over my life is I'm born again, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you could see that banner, that standard, amen, it would, it would proclaim, amen, who I am, not through what I say, but through what I do and the blood applied to my life. Now, when the standard had been dropped, amen, these bunch come and they said, we seek the same God you do. Amen. Why? Because there was no standard, amen, to declare who God was, amen. And it was like anything will do, amen. We've seen the, 12 tri the two, 10 tribes to the north, and, and we're just as good as they are. They're no better than we are, so we must be the same as this bunch coming here. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua, 
There's something different about them. They're the remnant that's been raised up out of captivity. Amen. They're the promise, amen, that God would not completely destroy his house, but that there would be, amen, a scepter of a king of righteousness that would reign, amen, forever. There had to be, amen, a seed left. There had to be a standard. There had to be a purity of people, amen, who was not defiled, amen. There had to be that remnant, amen, who could claim, amen, God, amen, and lift him up, amen. And when this bunch come in and said, we're like you, they said, no, you ain't. Mm. I'm not like anybody else. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. That doesn't make me better than somebody, but it does separate me from the world. Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers said to him, You have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. The God that you serve and the God that you said you serve with them ain't the same God that we're seeking here. Because when Jeroboam, amen, when you remember that those tribes were split, amen, the house of God was Jerusalem. But Jeroboam, fearing that the people, amen, would leave him and go back, amen, underneath uh, Rehoboam, he set up two places of false worship, one in Bethel and one in Dan. Bethel was about a, a, a day and a half, two days' journey from Jerusalem. In other words, they was pretty close. So in other words, he set one right there close by, an imitation right by the house of God, so that those that was right there wouldn't go on down Jerusalem, but they'd go right there to Bethel. And then he set one way up in the north in Dan, in the, uh, uh, the property of the, the children of Dan. He set one up there, a house of worship. And they were false. The standard was not over them. And the people that came in and overtook them, and as those gods began to meld together, and they began to worship all kind of stuff, amen, Whenever the real thing come up, they wanted to take part in it. The men of God stopped it. Well, what did that do? That set off a chain of events. Now they bring their accusation to the king. Cyrus is no longer the king. The king that sent Zerubbabel is no longer the king in Persia. There's a new king, and his name is Artaxius. And Artaxius has just fallen along with what was going on the whole time. He had no dog in that fight. Well, what happened was, when they brought this letter, they told him that this city has a history of being a rebellious city. This city has a history of coming against other kings and fighting and defeating other kings. How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. The God that I serve, he has a history. <laughs> The God that I serve has a history, amen, of defeating, amen, what comes up against him. And I can say hallelujah to that, amen, that I serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords, uh, and that he doesn't lose battles, amen. Uh, and the world may think he's a rebellious king, uh, but I know him, amen, through the blood of his son Jesus Christ, amen. And I come to find out he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And they said, he's a rebellious, that's a rebellious city, we need to put it down. And he did. All that work that had been going on, all that joy, all that peace, and all that satisfaction, amen, from doing the will and the work of God, it come to a screeching halt whenever the enemy tried to clamp down on it. Now, when the copy of the king of Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rahum and Shimei the scribe, in other words, those... Uh, 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 those band of uh, misfits that came and wanted to take part in the building whenever they were shut out of it because they wasn't living right. Every church, amen, ain't right. I'm just sorry. It ain't. Amen. The, the Bible gives us examples of those that try to imitate, amen, the real thing. And whenever they came, those that were born again here, or uh, in my sense, I say born again, but in this sense, they were followers of God because Christ has not come and died yet, so they wasn't born again. But they were true, amen, followers of God, amen. And they said, you're not like us, amen. What you're doing is false worship. What we're doing is pure, amen, before God, Jehovah God. There was a difference. And that's a message for another time. <laughs> Don't let me get trapped in that one. But they raised up the standard, and they said, we are of the children of the Most High God. And we are going to fight, and we're going to build, and we're going to do that which God has had us to do. So they took that, and they went to the king, and then by force and by power, 
they put down, amen, that small uh, a group of, of Jews that was trying to rebuild that wall. They hampered and hindered that work, and they stopped that work. And the enemy has, uh, uh, since God has begun a good work in you, amen, and, and we understand that he will, amen, perform that good work and bring it to completion, amen. Uh, but in the midst, amen, of the altar experience, uh, amen, and standing before God and hearing him say, well done, uh, there's going to be a battle that takes place, amen, uh, through the course of this life. Uh, and the enemy's trying his best to discourage uh, and to tear down, amen. Uh, and when he come into this situation, uh, he ceased, amen, the men working on the temple. He caused it to stop. Amen. The men lost heart. Where did that courage go? Amen. Where did that bravery go? Where did that willingness, amen, to fight, amen, and to keep up, amen, the, uh, uh, the will of God? What happened, amen, in the church, amen, when the enemy came in and began to try to, amen, come in, amen, and we want to be like you and we want to do like you, amen. Uh, and what happened, we had men who were not watchmen on the wall, amen. Uh, we had congregations, amen, who had fallen asleep at the wheel, uh, amen, and now they've taken out, amen, uh, amazing grace and I'll fly away, uh, and they've replaced it, amen, uh, with stuff that don't glorify God, amen. It glorifies the person that wrote the song. I'm not against all things that are new. I had a young boy, 24 years old. He goes to a modern style church. And the Lord put him in my life for a couple of days and I began to talk to him. And he said, Brother Chris, he said, I'm amazed at how the modern church has lost its way. I said, son, talk to me. 24 years old. He said, but so much of it is fake. He said, it's got a pretty glow about it. It's, it's got a lot of things about it that look good. And he said, a lot of people come and they feel good when they're there. He says, but there's no substance to it. There's nothing to it when you leave and you go home and you begin to try to apply what you've been taught, what you've heard, amen. And you begin to try to stand on it, amen, in the midst of that battle. And he said, you find out, amen, it's a plastic sword. There's nothing to it. And the enemy easily defeats it over and over and over again. He said, that's why they've quit preaching the gospel, amen, because they don't want the gospel. They want to be spoon-fed, amen, this stuff, amen. Why? Because the standard was no longer there. This is who we are. And when the enemy tries to come in and bring something that's not correct in here, I'm responsible. You're responsible for that. And we stand up against it. Why? Not because we want to hurt that person. But because, amen, we know what God has called us to be, amen. We know His Word, amen. And we're not going, amen, to follow, amen, that which is false. And that's what they did. They stood up against it. But that didn't stop the enemy from coming. That didn't stop the enemy. So in other words, making up our mind, we're going to keep on, does not cause the enemy to run and never come back again. And he keeps fighting. He keeps coming back. And every time he comes back, he brings more power with him to try to overcome, amen, you and me. And the Bible tells us, amen, that, amen, a threefold cord, amen, is strong. It cannot be broken. What does that mean? That means when we come together, amen, us or you and me out by ourselves, we cannot be defeated, amen, because Jesus Christ lives on the inside. And whenever the enemy begins to press, amen, all we have to do is cry out to the name of Jesus, amen. You may have to keep doing it. You may have to keep calling out his name. Uh, I didn't say one time, uh, but you may have to just sit there, amen, and look like a fool to the world, amen, and just say, Jesus, 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 amen, and keep calling on his name, amen, until you press through, amen, to the other side. But you ain't going to be defeated if you stand upon him. But it's so hard when we're by ourselves. And the, the picture I want to close with is this. Alone, we're never alone. God's always with us. But it's so much better when we can be together. Because when the enemy tries to come in in this situation, there's much more. The cord is a lot stronger. It's a lot tighter. It's a lot stronger. It's a lot. It can handle so much more weight whenever we're together. 
Amen. And that's why, amen, failing to come to the house of God is such a detriment, amen, to his people, amen. Uh, you can be out there by yourself, amen, in a sense. You may miss, amen, uh, but you know as well as I do, when you miss, that devil comes, amen. And the more we miss, amen, the more he pounces, amen. And you still don't have to go in You still don't have to succumb to him. Uh, but it's a lot harder to fight out there, amen. But when you come in with brothers and sisters, amen, you can draw strength and get help to fight. I want to encourage you today. The children of Israel allowed the enemy to stop the work because they got discouraged, because the enemy come against them. Not just one time, but if you read that fourth chapter, you see that they come against them and wanted to join in with them. But Sister, Sister Barbara, they said, we can't allow that because what you're trying to do and what we're trying to do is two different things. Two churches side by side doesn't necessarily mean two houses of God. One may be trying to lift up God, the other one may not. You may not from the outside see the difference, amen. But if you go on the inside, amen, you should be able to discern. It says, then the people of the land, they weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. So they were mad and they began to come at them, began to steal their supplies and break their lines of communication, began to try to do things to hinder them. They hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. <laughs> Whoa. You ever heard of anointed, anointed troublemakers? They hired counselors. That word counselor there means somebody specific to do a specific job. If I counsel you, that means I'm supposed to know what I'm doing, ain't it? So they hired anointed troublemakers <laughs> to go in there and frustrate their purpose. They tried to steal their tools and their equipment to hinder their work. They sent in spies, so to speak, or they, they infiltrated the children of God and, and, and tried to give counsel, amen, uh, while he's sitting there trying to throw them bricks up there and trying to build, and, and, and then this anointed devil is sitting there behind him. Uh, my Lord, I'm tired of doing all We shouldn't have to be doing all this work. And it's just nag, 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 nag. And begin to try to pick them off one by one. Some of you can see these instances of the enemy working in your life trying to discourage you and tear you down trying to come against you and everything that you're doing for God and it said then the work ceased it ceased for a period of time it ceased unto and that word unto is a transitional word it means something changed it ceased from here unto here something happened unto <laughs> something changed that unto amen i was lost and undone until jesus came and found me amen uh, in other words i struggled or i suffered amen in, in a sin sick condition amen but then jesus came and i was saved now there's been a lot of teals and untos in my life i was walking fine till <laughs> that storm came and I stayed in that darkness unto <laughs> Jesus came and picked me up. There's a lot of teals and untos in serving God. It's the valley times. It's the hard times. It's the dark times. It's the bleak and the, and the, the hurtful times. It's the accusation time. It's the time to hear your family come against you. It's a time when your friends rise up against you. It's your time when your boss, amen, doesn't give you the promotion. It's the time when, hey, you know, the, the girl at the checkout line, she puts up the I'm closed going home sign, and you've just been waiting for 30 minutes, and you've changed aisles three times, and you finally got to her, and she put it up there just before you came. Ah, oh, so frustrating. Now i got to go all the way back to the other end and stand in that line, and now there's 10 people there. It's frustrating, ain't it? That devil knows how to get us. But it said, then came the prophets. Then came the men of God who would preach, this is what God says do. And it says, then Zerubbabel and Jeshua picked up the instruments again. Whenever we're fighting, 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 we find ourselves being put down by the enemy. We're... I don't see it as I'm being defeated, but I see it as I'm losing ground. 